Oh, good evening. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review for the U.S. markets for Monday's trading session, the nineteenth um, of December, two thousand and sixteen. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers. You can download the uh, app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now in terms of U.S. markets, really the theme this week has been, or the focus this week really has been the uh, emphasis on Yellen's hawkish stance, hence the U.S. dollar certainly has uh, continued its push higher given the, uh, the dot plot and the potential projections of a three rate hikes next year in 2017, which really initially was two and now it's moved to three. Therefore, a more than a hawkish, well, more than expected hawkish stance from Yellen. And from my perspective, that should technically put a stop uh, and a halt to the uh, potential rally in equities, which we are seeing signs of as well. So again, something to be, uh, to observe. Okay, now in terms of um, equities, let's discuss that because really it's all about uh, the technical position on equities and then we can certainly amalgamate the fundamentals. So let's start off with the Dow Jones first of all, okay. The Dow Jones really has been the leader. If you look at the daily chart, it's been screaming higher non-stop. Uh, now you can certainly see an increased volume on the sell side. So the sell candle certainly has had an impressive uh, a huge spike in volume really I mean it's almost 1.5 times no one so again you are looking at weakness when you get a uh, volume spike like that with obviously selling pressure it certainly needs to be noted and respected okay and it certainly means that this market is certainly going to be stopped in its ranks now the 60 minute chart you can see no additional new high And the daily chart certainly has stalled. Now, there was uh, news with regards to China, and the, apparently China seized a U.S. Uh, underwater drone, okay, spying on, on China. So, again, certainly uh, potential geopolitical tensions there. Now, obviously, we have concerns with regards to Italy and France, which have obviously been forgotten as well. So, it certainly seems to be the, uh, the norm. But for now... We're looking at the uh, the actual Dow as potentially stalling here, okay? In terms of the Dow transportation average, Dow transports, no new highs, lower lows, lower highs, okay? Daily chart as well, indicating potential weakness on the Dow transportation average. And the weekly chart, you can clearly see that you are looking at resistance and given the fact that we've held that potential double top scenario, bias remains bearish, okay? So again, it certainly is looking to move lower, so. Dow transportation, certainly not confirming the strength. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Okay, now, so Dow transports and the Dow Jones both indicating weakness. Let's move on to the uh, S&P 500 now, okay? Uh, the daily chart, the S&P 500, again, increased volume on the sell side. That certainly isn't a good sign. Also, weekly chart of the uh, S&P 500, certainly registered a doji. Again, not so good sign. Uh, signs of a potential exhaustion or reversal. 60-minute chart really is probably the most bearish out of them all. You have a H&S formation. And that certainly isn't a good sign, it's certainly not, not healthy either. Okay, so again, looking for weakness and to continue on the S&P 500. You do have support down below at 2250. You currently have support at 2254. Let's see how the market plays out. Again, if you start to trade below H&S formation neckline of uh, 2252, then you know we are going to first of all gap fill. So gap fill is uh, down to 22.46, so watch out for 22.46. Once we break 22.46, then literally it's 22.27, potentially even as low as 22.13 below. So it certainly does open up the downside. So just bear that in mind, okay, folks? Certainly needs to be bearing in mind and taken into consideration. So the Russell, sorry, the uh, not S&P 500 certainly is weak. Now let's move on to the Russell, see exactly where the Russell stands. As always, you always confirm the S&P 500 move with the Russell's move. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is IWN. I don't want IWN. I need IWM. So bear with me. Oh, here we go. Russell 2000. Okay, so the daily chart here. Registers a doji, a potential topping tail, weakness here. Okay, moving on to the 60-minute chart now. Okay, so again, it looks like we're making a lower high and looking to test that lower low below or potentially test the double bottom scenario. If we do flush, then the next level of support is 134. 
So again, Russell's certainly looking lackluster and certainly looking like he's exhausted and starts to move lower. Okay, that certainly remains the uh, overriding position there. Now, given the fact that S&P 500 is weak, we've confirmed the Dow, dollar down, trying transport, certainly looking weak. Let's look at the Nasdaq now. Okay, so Nasdaq daily at the moment has broken about the breakout zone, which is currently 49.10, 49.11. Now, the expectation now is that we are going to hold that and continue to move higher. And then continue to move higher, okay? Or, alternatively, we break that 49.10 and then we go down to gap fill, which is 4.875. Okay, so either scenario can hold. Either we can we remain bullish, the market continues its ascent, and we continue to new highs, or we start to low trade lower and close that gap 48.75. There are only two potential scenarios that could possibly occur on the Nasdaq, okay, going into Monday's session. And again, a lot of it will depend on how Asian markets react, etc., etc. Okay, so that should be interesting. But for now, you're looking at a chart of the Nasdaq. If we do start to move higher, you will be capped on the Nasdaq in terms of resistance on the upside. You're looking at resistance at 4950 zone. And then you have resistance at the 4970 zone. So that's two zones of resistance. And if the market remains weak, then you are looking to close the gap below, which is currently uh, at present. It's a 4875. And then obviously further targets certainly are open on the way down. Okay, so that's the NASDAQ organized. Uh, let's just confirm we're going to cross reference that with the biotechs and semiconductors as well. The biotechs chart on the daily basis, you can see a topping tail, certainly weakness, and you're looking to potentially target the. Uh, the gap below the VIX as well, which is a volatility gauge and the fear gauge again is carving out potential double bottom. So, from my understanding, this you are going into risk off, or we're all going into risk off mode, especially given the fact that the German DAX is into resistance and therefore we are looking for weakness. Now, again, if you go to the NASDAQ, if I go to the 10 minute chart of the NASDAQ, you are looking at HS formation target of 4880. Okay. And that certainly coincides with the S&P 500 target of uh, 22.27. So certainly bearish bias on the U.S. markets and looking for further downside. On that note, be sure to visit CFDs.com and certainly take advantage of the bonus. Goodbye now.